The following program may contain subject matter and language suitable for mature audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Oh, we're oh. 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 <laughs> and just let we, him die we, all by himself. We played a band together. You can tell that because yeah. we didn't know when to do it. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh, we're not doing it? No. no. Wow. Yeah. All right. That's yeah, fucked up. <laughs> that felt hurtful. At the end? I think there's a natural ending there somewhere. <laughs> when, I, when I just cut the film and put, huh. <laughs> okay. Welcome back to the finale episode of the Meltdown. My name is Norm. I'm Lou. And I'm Jeff. See, now last time we did this, you insisted that Jeff should be second, and yet you just <laughs> came right out and said, I'm Lou. Like, hey, look at me. I'm you, the big attraction. For those of you who have seen the video, you'll see that his hand was like this. The video. <laughs> pointing to me. I feel like it's a Zapruder film. Well, yeah, but I was actually doing this. I was going past you. Back, the the right bullet down. clearly Back, went this right. way. Yeah. Did you did you actually get introduced, Jeff? Uh, I can't Sorry. remember. Sorry. You're a part of the show as well, I think. Yeah, no, I said my name. Okay. Well, today... <laughs> since my neck went back into We've the got right. all that straightened back out. Back the right. We got oh my God. Uh, uh, <laughs> Lou Saracino joins us today. Obviously, he's just jumped into the into the show like he owns the thing. That's right. Uh, I'm like penicillin, man. A little bit of me, <laughs> right. really good for you. And it goes Too a much. long, long way. Make it sick. Right. Yeah. And we are talking about uh, space today, the final frontier. Uh, you know, what are some of your favorite? Movies like uh, space movies, space oh, TV shows. I know, I know. Jeff wanted to kick off with his all-time favorite. Well, what's, your all time, what's your all-time well, favorite? Well, it's, it's pretty obvious. It's almost boring. I mean, obviously the the original Star Wars. Although I actually I slightly like Empire Strikes Back a little better, but that's really nitpicking. Uh, but yeah, so I'll state the obvious. Star, Star Wars. Wars, of course. Okay. Has anybody ever seen uh, 2001: A Space Odyssey? Yes. Stanley uh, Kubrick. Yes, that's also. Yes. Uh, okay. I, I have you been able to sit through the whole thing? No, because I haven't. I, I'll tell you know as much. I can appreciate the Kubrick is a, is a genius. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm told. Yeah, well, that's what uh, I'll tell you. Well, and, and if you take film theory of any kind, you know, you can sort of see that, that certainly he was a genius in that regard. Oh, of course. Yeah. I've had issue with how he's directed certain actors, as we all are familiar with the story about The Shining and so on. But in terms of 2001, I think it's a little overrated. It is overrated, I find. I, I, I was yeah. happy to see it, but it was one of those films that you want to see, but once it's over, like, okay, good, I'm glad that's over. I'm happy for the experience. It's so dated. Yeah, it, well, it is. Yeah. Right, and by nature of what it is, yeah, right? And the special is. effects are like, oh. Well, yeah, it's 17 years ago now. No, no, 60, it came on 69. No, no, but if... Oh, I'm sorry, 2001, I get it. 2001. Yeah, I thought you meant when the actual release I was told there'd be no God, I find that space movies tend to fall in... A fairly limited category, right? Mm -hmm. So you'll have one which is the cautionary tale, Alien, yeah, 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 uh, you know that kind of stuff, and then you'll have one which is, you know, we can talk about how great or not great Alien was, but uh, or ones where it's more about contacting another form of life, yeah, you know, things yeah. like Contact, contact obviously, yeah, and, and yeah. so forth. That was a cool movie, and I just find it odd that it, in the history of film. Those really are the two tropes that we've used yeah. over and over again, yeah. and, I'm, and I'm clear, unclear as to why. So to me, that points. I think those are the those are the the burning questions. They they never change. Is there life out there? Well, the and if there is, are they gonna eat us for breakfast or show us how to be better people? Well, I have, I have two things to say. So the burning questions, first of all, yeah. are ones you can solve with a cream. The second, salve with a cream. We prefer salve. <laughs> the, se the second uh, is that you referred to the whole, and you'll probably appreciate this as well, the Twilight Zone thing, right? How to oh, serve yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So those kinds of ideas have been in popular culture for a yeah. long time. But I remember yeah. the reason I mentioned it is I remember reading an article about how 
the, the rise of monster films and zombie films generally happens when there's economic uncertainty, which I thought was fascinating. Yeah. So I wonder, therefore, whether these kinds of space movies, because they as well go in and out of phase, yeah. point to a larger issue happening in society. Well, it's quite possible. I, yeah. In the case of Star Wars, for example, it's been theorized. Well, why why was it so popular at the box office? Because he, it even surprised George Lucas. He thought it was going to be like a nice little cult film. So he'd have a certain following. He did not imagine mm -hmm. that oh, it was as popular as, as, it, as it became. Um, Although he kept the merchandising. He rights, did. Well, right? you know what? Um, um, 20th Century Fox didn't want the merchandising because they also thought this is going to be a small little oh, film. Yeah. Why would we want the merchandising Sucks rights? So George yeah. Lucas said, okay, I'll take them. I'll take the merchandising rights, but you look at films <coughs> in the mid '70s. They were they were gritty, they were realistic. Uh, the Deer Hunter, which I think came out actually a year after, it's one of my well, favorite. Even movies. Rocky, you know, a gritty. Well, the first like Rocky's great, unbelievable. Oh, well, the first Rocky's a great movie. film. He won an Oscar. Yeah, it was a great space yeah. movie. Too. Yeah, but you, but that no, but this is my point is that, what, and there's a lot space. of great examples of films. These <laughs> these were great films. Whether it's Rocky, the original Rocky for it's sure, exactly. the Godfather films that came out, <laughs> the Sting, etc. <laughs> so but the, weird. But these are all gritty sort of. Yeah. <laughs> Realistic. They weren't escapist films, no. and Star Wars sort of That's came a very out good of nowhere. Point, Jeff. This was this, this this escapist film, and nobody had done, for the most part, an escapist film for quite some time. And and of course, obviously, with the crawl, you know, goes goes back to the Saturday morning serial. So there's yeah. pure nostalgia for people who could remember. For sure, the Flash Gordon serials, yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. So Listen, I remember I I was at the Nelson Theater yeah. watching another movie when the trailer for Star Wars came on, and I remember. I was blown away by what I saw on the screen. Yeah. It, they showed, you know, Darth Vader they sh coming in on the ship. They showed the TIE fighters and the yeah. X-Wings battling Lightsaber. Like, and you're like, oh my God, I've never yeah. seen anything like this. I could not wait. And I, I remember saying right then and there, I am going to see this movie. And that has not happened since, to be quite honest. Yeah. Oh, that's A movie has not come along that I've reacted that way saying, oh, I'm definitely going to see that one. Honestly, Star Wars was the last one yeah. to do that. Well, it was in, such a novelty. In oh, fairness, yeah. though, yeah. I mean, I was 14 when Star Wars came out. Wow. So as a 14-year-old kid who had been reading comics and was into that, that side of pop yeah. culture, yeah. you know, I, I think what, what people unconsciously respond to in the first Star Wars is, you know, it's essentially the Joseph Campbell myth, right? It's the, the idea of a hero to power. It's the idea of, like, you know, there's a very set... <laughs> you go back as far as stories like Gilgamesh, there's, there, there is a very set routine. There's a challenge, you know, it's usually somebody who's a, uh, you know, a, a poor person of some kind yeah. or has had some kind of struggle, there's a challenge, you know, and so it follows a very clear arc. So right, those same right, right. tropes and those same uh, myths are are brought to life in yeah. Star Wars, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Although, I don't know if you guys know this, because you mentioned Empire, the original person they cast, do you guys know who they cast for Darth Vader originally? I think it was uh, Wally Cox. <laughs> no. Uh, Do you mean uh, to actually be in the costume Paul or the voice? Correct. Oh. Paul Lind. No, it was Christopher Walken. <laughs> oh, Christopher yeah. Walken. That would have been great. Yeah. Luke, I, <laughs> your father. <laughs> and now, little man. All right. If you, don't join, if you don't join Luke. me, I'm going to burn your face with a soldering iron. <laughs> actually, he was in The Best Picture of 1977, Annie Hall, which beat out Star Wars. Walken's in Annie Hall. And well, Christopher Walken plays Annie Hall's brother. Oh my God, yeah, dude! Well, there you go. Yeah. There's some film you know my, trivia for you. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna I'm not gonna get distracted with Annie Hall because it's it's a fantastic film. Okay, so back to space. We know that Jeff's number one is is Star Wars. Yes, got to be. And and I I I, I would kind of have to agree. But all my my all time favorite film, the the, the original. Which later became called A New Hope. I don't remember it being called A New Hope when it was released, but the original was just. Well, it's retcon, right? Like they go back and it, try to. But it just blew me away. You know, but totally what, what I, I think what I'd like to discuss with you guys as well is the idea of, you know, we, we are now able. Like we landed a camera on a comet. Yeah, we did. Like that's. Not us personally, but. No, that was me. Oh, was that you? Yeah. Oh, fuck. I just got. I literally just I, got back. Congratulations. Yeah. I wanted to say congratulations. I felt. You That's know what a hell it was? Of a feat. I mean. Well, what happened is that all the gear had gone down, so yeah. I had to jury rig a Game Boy wow. uh, and, a, and a couple. Yeah. I uh, I took a MacGyver course. When yeah. I was 15, 16 or something. I landed the rover on Mars myself. I, I don't know if that's. Oh. If that's uh, you know I'm I'm trying to upstage or anything. But no, no, I'm no, just no, saying no. Mars. Okay. No. Okay. Yeah. I, I've touched the the surface of the sun. <laughs> Have you? No. Yeah, I lived on the sun for four okay. years. All right. I, uh, I live in Barhaven. I had a timeshare. Oh my share. God! Why you win? I had a timeshare on the rim of a black hole. Yeah, Let's not talk hasn't. about rimming on who, this show. Who, who, this is that oh. was the last episode. Mm. Uh, we did oh, the yeah, sex episode. The, you know, now this is space. 
So my point is yeah. that we are seeing and understanding parts of how our universe works. Um, and and granted, you know what I love is like you know what people are. are that's not to downplay any of our, our, our accomplishments, but people are so filled with hubris. And you know, when it's like, well, and then you start asking questions like, what's the universe made of? Well, we know 30% and you go, well, what's the rest? And they go, we're not really sure. And this is what shows the poetry really inherent in all scientists, but it's dark. <laughs> so we're going to call it dark matter. Oh, wow. You guys really had to brain pool that, didn't you? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's interesting to me that we still that we can map, we can go out as far as as, as super clusters of stars. Mm -hmm. And there's, and I'm going to probably botch this, but there's a, a super cluster of stars called, it's a Hawaiian word, Lanaeka, and it's like celestial heaven, something like that. And you can go online and pull up the 3D map, mm -hmm. and it points to where we are. So you can go from this macro scale all the way down to where we are. Yeah. You can see why it might be a little daunting. <laughs> yeah, just a tad. For people. Oh, of course. Of right, course. because th that raises the issue, to me at least, of, of life, the notion of life. Yeah. And if life, in fact, always finds a way, yeah. then it doesn't make any sense at all that we would be the only of course, of cognitive course. life. Now, here's the 100%. issue, right? Yeah. There's a, a, an idea called the Great Curtain. So basically, the way they've explained some of this, because you know, you guys know the Drake equations, which is a, a you know, you. I, 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 I go over them every morning when I get up. Yeah, and Drake's a hell of a singer, so why yeah. wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. And he lived on Equation, didn't he? He did. Yeah. He did. Yeah. <laughs> so, my... <laughs> Seriously, that was a pretty good... So my point is this. That was gold. The theory is that... So one of the reasons we haven't been contacted is because in every society, there's a, a cataclysmic event that either kills off your society yeah. or you get past. Right. So... If you think about the time scales that are involved, certainly they may have been other civilizations, but maybe they happened hundreds of millions of years That's right. before us. Yep. So again, that raises the equation. What's so special? You know, I mean, like let, let's face it, folks. Yeah, we've done some pretty cool stuff yeah. as 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 beings, but we've also done some pretty horrible stuff. Yep. And that's what's an interesting thing about people is that, that duality. But this notion that our actions. <laughs> really have any inherent meaning yeah. is one that is fascinating to me. Yeah. Simply because of, of the scale of what we're we're talking about. Like we were talking earlier before we came on camera about landing on the moon. Which is an amazing thing. Yep. Yeah. An amazing, amazing thing. Yep. Yeah. But that's only as far as we've stepped off our at, at, for the time being. Yeah. Now, sure. And which brings me to the next point is Mars. Now there's a lot of people out there that say uh it's never going to happen because it's pretty much. Well, a, no, Mars has happened, dude. Actually, well, like a, yeah, no, no. I know the planet's happening. Yeah, okay. I want to clarify. <laughs> but you know, right now uh, with our current technology, it takes us approximately eight months to travel from Earth to Mars. That's nuts. Eight months in a confined space, uh, and one of the biggest challenges that they have is the psychological element of it. Because let's say we have a crew of, I don't know, 12 people, all right? Those 12 people have to not only be pretty fucking brilliant, uh, because they're going to be the first group out there to set shit up and whatever, you know, for the second wave and all that stuff, because it's going to take a lot of people and it's going to take a lot of time. But as Jeff has pointed out numerous times, the likelihood is you're not coming home. Oh, you're not coming home. Right? You're uh, not coming home. No, but I mean, conceivably, you could go out for a couple of years and then the new wave comes out and you could you could go back for another eight months but what they're what what a lot of the negatives are is that people being out in space that long and then on mars that long are going to be exposed to so much radiation so much uh, uh, shit that's going to make it impossible it pretty much is a death sentence but the psychology of making sure that those 12 people are not only brilliant but that they get along because you know Four months into the trip, you're halfway to Mars, and suddenly there are interpersonal issues. Yeah. That could be extremely dangerous. You can't just stop the ship and get off. You can't turn it around. Well, see, here's the thing. and that's <clears> what's, <throat> you're, I, it's, I, it's crazy. I agree with you to, to a certain degree, because we are inherently flawed creatures. Yeah. I've been in a confined space for eight <laughs> months, touring Canada and the States <laughs> in a 74 con line. And I can tell you that there were yeah. moments where it's like, I love you guys, but I will kill you and bury you, and no one will know. <laughs> but Lewis... If you had to, you could pull over to the side of the road, get out yes. of the car, and walk away. So you could do whatever you want. You could get some breathing. Room. Absolutely, you can't hear. And but the look, 
Sorry. Uh, and you also have gravity pulling you down. That's the other thing. Humans were, yeah. and, and dogs and cats, not that dogs and cats are going to Mars, but you know what I mean. Humans were meant to have You're gravity. You're being a species this <laughs> I, I don't like it. Yeah. Maybe dogs yeah. and cats will go to Mars someday. But gravity, that's the other thing. That's, that's if you say eight months, whatever, I've heard it takes 300 days, to, depending. But it also depends how far away Mars is at any given that's time right. from the Earth. But anyways, it's a long time. That's approximately eight months of zero gravity. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. even people that go up in the uh, International Space Station that's right. that are up there for a few months, they actually have to get reacquainted. Well, their muscles atrophy. Well, of well, course. They exactly. Yeah, they're I, not needed. I've yeah. heard one thing that some astronauts are returned from the ISS, they have to relearn how to drive a car, for example. Their motor skills wow. are just not functioning. Now, I think it depends on each astronaut what he or she can do or cannot do when they return but that's all that's another thing lack of gravity for approximately eight months well, the, the driving thing's interesting because are, are most astronauts from montreal <laughs> yeah but it's interesting that actually it's most astronauts skills. are from moscow i think these <laughs> yeah. days yeah yeah i think what's cool and is that, that fills me with confidence i think because cool those guys don't patch to, stuff together they have to relearn their motor skills driving a car i kind of like the motor skills <laughs> in the car that to me is funny uh, motor skills, because <laughs> a car has a motor. You yeah. see, I'm, I'm still. I'm, um, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm still not. <clears throat> Before we can actually get to this, oh. I have got five space facts. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So let's do <laughs> that first. Let's go to some meltdown. Yeah. Fun facts. So here we have five space facts. Some of these you probably know. I'm sure we all know the first one. But I found these really interesting. First is, all of space is completely silent. Sound waves need a medium to travel through. Since there is no atmosphere in space, space will always be eerily silent. You may be asking how astronauts can talk to each other in space. Well, lucky for them, radio waves can travel through space. So sound itself cannot, but radio waves right, can. Right, because you, you need yeah. an atmosphere of some kind to hear sound, Exactly, right? exactly. Air, so like they say in space, no one can hear you scream. Unless, and this is important, you're with other people. <laughs> and, yeah. and they but can. They, yeah, if you're in a... <laughs> Make the time of a right. film. I find it weird that... Uh, these are good facts. You know what right? would be really good in space are old people, particularly men, because they love to fart. <laughs> and no one can hear them. Well, actually, that space. wasn't that the line of space balls in space? No one can hear you fart. <laughs> oh God, I love that movie I think so that was much. A tag, dude. It's their tagline. It's so dumb and so brilliant. Yeah, and John Candy was hilarious. Oh it? come on. Uh, <laughs> here is an, uh, another fact: there is an uncountable number of stars in the known universe. Uh, we basically have no idea how many stars there are in the universe right now. We use our estimate of how many stars there are in our own galaxy. The Milky Way. Uh, we then multiply that number by the best guesstimate What's of the number of galaxies <laughs> in the universe. Yeah. After all that math, NASA can only confidently say that there are zillions of uncountable stars. Now a zillion is any uncountable amount. <laughs> An Australian National University study put their estimate at 70 sextillion. Put another wow. way, that's 70 Thousand million million million. Good lord! Yeah, this figure is basically a guess, though. See, that's right. that's the thing. It's the it's the scale, and I think that's the disconnect for most people. Well, yeah, it like is. we yeah. three are kind of nerdish, geeky guys, and, and we love well, that I'm, kind of stuff. Oh sure. But I I can appreciate how for for some people it would be like, what are you talking about? Like, yeah. it, it's hard to, mm -hmm. you know, and it's hard to reconcile ideas of religion around that kind of thing too, right? Because yeah. you're like, there is so, and now they're talking about. You know, multiple dimensions. They're talking like it, it's. Oh, I know, I know, it's crazy. It's impossible to get your head around. Yeah, we yeah. did a we did a show on genealogy, and one of the facts was that if like you the, the, the belief in genies. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> oh man, that's disappointing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you think you're the first yeah. person to say that to me, buddy? <laughs> that's true. Oh. If you took all your DNA. Mm -hmm and lined it all up strand by strand, it could go to the sun and back wow. 12 times. Wow! Yeah. So, but even that's hard to fathom. Because we all don't know, you know, it's 93 million miles, but we don't conceive what, what is 93 million miles. Well, have you guys ever seen that? It's a, it's a video where they... they, they yeah, zoom. Uh, no, I, well, I don't know if it's the same one, but they oh. actually plan out the scale of the just our universe okay. or not our universe our um, solar system yeah and in real time and they break it down to the smallest and you know yeah things and still the point of the earth to the sun is like 500 miles right so wow. it's like how do you 
<laughs> yeah. Like just the Mars thing, eight months. <clears throat> yeah, that's crazy. To me, the larger and smarter, or, or rather the larger issue and the, the smarter way to approach this would be to look at propulsion and figure out ways to do this. Because even if we get to Mars, okay, then what? Yeah. So how long would it take to leave our solar system? Years, yeah. a decade? Yeah, I mean, there's uh, yeah, there's uh, space probes or whatever that are, that are sort of now just leaving now. And how long did that take? Uh, Thirty, at least, forty years. Yeah. See? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. then you get out, and then the larger issue again yeah. is that there's stuff out past Neptune for the most yeah. part, or even Pluto. Yeah. There's we know there's the Oort cloud, mm -hmm. right, which is this cloud of asteroids and, and kind of just floating there yeah. in space. You know, there's now these theories that because of the gravitational effects on things like Neptune and Pluto. There must be another, maybe there's another planet out there. Yeah. Like, we don't know no. if there's another planet in our own solar system. Yeah. To give yes. you a, a, an idea of that, that's like going in your backyard and going, when did I get a Greek statue? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. That's not fair because they do pop up. I've, uh, Greek statue? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's usually a new one every every time I go. Well, back. we have the half bathtub in the back, in the backyard, which if you're Italian, that'll, that'll mean something too. <laughs> Right. Here, here's another space I need the fact. place to put the uh, Mary and Joseph and, and uh, Jesus. <laughs> you mean like a manger? No. Have you got like a half a bathtub where you just cut it? <laughs> Do I? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, God. Here's another space fact. Right. The Apollo astronauts footprints on the moon will probably stay there for That's at right. least a hundred million years. Since the moon doesn't have an atmosphere, there's no wind or water to erode or wash away the Apollo astronauts mark on the moon. That means their footprints, rover prints, spaceship prints, and discarded materials will stay preserved on the moon for a very long time. They won't stay on there forever, though. The moon is still a dynamic environment. Actually being constantly bombarded with micrometeorites, which means that erosion is still happening on the moon just very, very slowly. slowly. Uh, here's another one. I found this really interesting. Wait, before you go to the next one, can yes, I just say a couple things? About please. <laughs> Lou, here's you what, have the floor thank you, Norm. in space. There, uh, floor there, space. An article <laughs> saying <laughs> that because we've landed on the moon so often, we've sent so many probes up, yeah. underneath the layer of moon dust, which is like talcum, right? Yeah. Uh, underneath that is a, essentially a black surface. Right. The temperature on the moon has changed by three degrees, has increased by three degrees, which I thought was really oh, interesting. fascinating. The other thing I want to mention is that you can go online uh, and whether you're not aware of this or aware of this or not, but there was uh, the t one of the transmissions from the moon, and Jeff could back me up on this, actually cut out mysteriously for 89 seconds, mm -hmm. and it was a video feed, mm -hmm. and they were flying over a crater called Aristakis, I think, if I'm not butchering it. And I would suggest, and I'm not particularly conspiracy minded, that you check it out, and you can look at it on on YouTube, and it'll blow your mind. So there's this idea, again, that we understand. Our physical world, right, 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 and what there is to see out there. When in fact, you know, we're a pebble in the ocean. Yeah, which is okay too, right? Like it's yeah. not a reason to give up. It's no, a reason no. to go. We're part of something miraculous. Yes. Yeah. You know? Anyways, I'm, I'm done preaching, everybody. Much, you can dude. send your money to Luigi Saracino <laughs> or dry cleaning vouchers, bingo chits, whatever you got. I, All right. One more fact, Jeff. Hold on to that thought because if I don't get these out, we'll never. It'll never happen. Ninety-nine percent of our solar system's mass is the Sun, mm, yeah, ninety nine percent. Our star, the 99%. sun, ninety nine percent. Yeah, wow. Our star, the sun, is so dense that it accounts for a whopping ninety nine percent of our entire solar system. That's what it allows it to dominate it gravitationally. Technically, our sun is a G type main sequence star, which means that every second it fuses approximately six hundred million tons of hydrogen to helium. Wow. This means that it also converts about 4 million tons of matter to energy as a byproduct. Being the type of star that the sun is, it also means that when it dies, it will become a red giant and envelop the earth and everything on it. But don't worry, that won't happen for another 5 billion years. Huh? So there you go. Oh, and our, our last fact. I found this fucking fascinating. More energy from the sun hits earth every hour than the planet uses in a year. Wow. Okay. Good thing we're using that. Yeah. You should be sad oh. to know that solar technology produces less than one-tenth of one percent of global energy demand. This is due to several factors, including how much land is required for solar panels to capture enough energy for a population of people to use, how unreliable it is in bad weather and at night, and how expensive the technology is to install. Despite all these drawbacks, the use of solar energy has increased at the rate of 20% each wow. year for the past 15 years. But the fact that the sun actually 
gives us more energy in one hour than the planet uses in, in a, year. a year. That to me is insane. But you know what that's about, right? Like so because now we're kind of breaking down this notion into into people, and it's all about money. It's all about economics. Yeah, so course, if yeah. you own Petro Canada or whoever, and you go free energy, well, no, we're not real big on free energy, well, no, no. right? So of course, yeah. it, it, it again it raises the notion to me of what I said before about the duality, and 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 like I would love. You know, to sleep for like a hundred years and come back and go, oh wow, we've settled on Saturn or whatever the case might be, right? Mm. I am concerned <laughs> that we're not going to get past our own nonsense. Well, and you know, you were telling a story about how when you were on tour <laughs> once, you were in uh, uh, Montana. Yes. And you were sitting there having lunch and you look across the street and saw what? I saw, I saw a drive through that's my favorite part of that. My drive through gun, and booze shop. Yeah. And that's when you decided that... Yes, I literally, as I said to these guys, I yeah. sat down on the curb and went, well, we're done. Yeah. We're done. Yeah. Because here's what I love about that, is it's either genius, like absolute genius, or I, like I don't... You know, here's the thing, man. Like I, I, I am not here to judge anybody or tell anybody how to live or whatever else, but I will say that there are things that I've seen in my life where I go, wow, I hope we can sort this out. So we we talked about movies at the beginning of the show. There were some facts. Uh, I think right now what we should do, though, is take a quick look at a compilation of some of Lou's best moments on this season. Oh, that's nice. Thank of you. Meltdown a Minute with you. Meth. I think meth has a branding problem. I don't think it's a bad habit, because you're always hearing, hey, meth is bad, and, and it ruins lives, and drugs are bad, and blah, blah, blah. Don't sleep with your own family. I can't believe I have to explain this. What happened to the utopian society? Okay, I'm rambling a little bit. I saw an ad for self-driving cars. In the back of the car is a full-on living room. How fucking lazy do you have to be to bring your ottoman with you on the 10-minute drive to Walmart? Polygamy, in fact, is not the name of the world's worst board game, but they also keep us safe, right? So the food that we eat is safe, that the place we work at is safe, you know, that the appliances we use are safe so that when you plug your toaster in and throw it into the tub, it works the way it's supposed to work. Genealogy! <coughs> Excuse me. I got excited. Is the science of uh, discovering your roots and not so much the science of discovering genes. How lazy are we? Holy macaroni and cheese. Really? Laugh. Boy, if you guys were here 10 seconds earlier, you would laugh. <sighs> and we're back. Well, we hope you certainly enjoyed that. Lou, funny, funny stuff. <laughs> I, uh, I killed myself. I know, I uh, am. It's a, it's a gift. <laughs> you know, it's a gift. Yeah. Um, what about TV shows? Anybody Does anybody have a favorite space TV show? Um, I'll start. Yeah. Because I have one. Okay. Uh, I thought Star Trek The Next Generation and Star Trek, period. The original, yeah, uh, were I mean to me Star Trek. It's yes, if you watch some of the episodes today, you know it's a little camp. It's, sure, it's a little camp. They didn't have the budget, perhaps that we have now. They didn't have the technology that we have now to to really make things look realistic. Maybe an acting coach for Shatner. Well, you know he was, <laughs> you know he was who he was, and he was a I'm, recognizable I'm, I'm character. I'm teasing. I love William Shatner. I'm, uh, I'm, hey, I'm, man, clearly. he's been to Stratford. Dude, well, he, um, he was amazing. Go. I've been there. I got gas in the Australia yeah. once. Um, yeah. But seriously, so that for me, that's one of my all-time favorites. I gotta say, I think it's Star Trek. But I also did like the Next Generation. You know, with uh, uh, Patrick Stewart. Yeah. I, I just thought it was a great show. I, I show. to me, the themes are what I find fascinating in, mm. in these. And sci-fi has always been clearly because of the nature of what it is, the, the kind of vanguard. So whether you're reading Bradbury, whether you're reading Rodbury, whether you're reading Ursula K. Le Guin, whatever the case may be, it's these, much like comic books, bringing these big ideas to the, to yeah. the forefront. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's what attracted me to that kind of stuff, yeah. right? Like yeah, The yeah. Lathe of Heaven is one of my favorite books. And it's the whole idea is basically aliens come to Earth and uh, they, they eliminate the need for racism by making everybody the same color and then of course people find another way to hate each other. Of right? course, which, so, is, which is probably what would happen. So it, it addresses the, these ideas that are are person to person and community based, yeah. but in a much larger sense. And I don't think you'd be able to get away with putting those same ideas across if it wasn't dressed up that way. Yeah. No, that's true. That's very you true. By I mean? using by using that as a vehicle. Well, Star Trek, dude, you, yeah, you, you had exactly. an African American yeah. woman who was playing 
you know? Yeah. A major role. It was a major cast yeah. member. You, who are you? A major <laughs> cast member. And, and I don't know if you guys know this. When 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 Shatner and and I forget her name now, Michelle. Was it Eartha? Eartha no, are you talking about Uhura? Yes, no, Michelle. Uh, um, yes, I totally forget. But they they kiss. Michelle. On, Michelle. Sorry. Michelle. Okay. Yeah. So they, they kiss in one of the episodes. Yes, they do. And that was that was. And the TV huge. and the sponsors were like, uh, oh, "No, that's not going to happen." Right, and it was actually right. Shatner that said, "I'm." Every take they did, he he framed it in such a way that they had no choice, they had no choice. but to use yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Right. So it's like. The idea that there was a mixed sex crew, that yeah. there were, you know, like that to me, you know, sometimes, here's the thing, sometimes you, you want to pass along information and people are reticent, and I think if you, that's why we have stories, that's why we have parables, that's yeah. why we have, you know, it, yep. is to, yep. to put it in a community, in, in a way that everybody kind of gets what's going on. Right, right. You know, there's an episode in Star Trek, one of my favorite, where they go to the planet Maltus. Okay. Maltus, Maltusian theory is basically population theory. So Maltus was a, 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 a scientist or a mathematician of some kind who speculated that by the time we get to 2018 mm -hmm. or 2020, we're going to have a population that can't be supported by the organism that we're living on. Okay. They were talking about that. When did Star Trek come out? The 60s? Yes. 65? Yeah. No, uh, I believe it was actually 66, maybe. Yeah, you were um, off by a year, Lou. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because, That's on me. Yeah. Corrected again I, by Jeff. <laughs> I think I think it might have even been 67. Yeah. There's there's a Get Smart episode, Leonard Nimoy's in it. And yeah. it oh, my came God. Out yeah. 1960, early 1966, and I believe it was about a year before Leonard Nimoy... Uh, First appeared at Star Trek. Well, and the, so so sixty six, yeah. sixty seven. And his first episode when when he was on it, he was he was way over I don't, the top. I, think and, I remember. Oh that. my god, he was so over the top. He was I yelling love, and screaming and blah 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 blah. And, then, and then they pulled his character back to be more cold and calculated. Yes, yes, which was brilliant. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Well, and you know, and, and again, like you know, we, we I don't know if we have the tools, the cognitive tools. You know, because our, our expectation, whether it's conscious or not, when we meet another life form, is that they're going to look like us. To a certain degree, they're going to share, share a certain amount of similarities. I don't think now, if you look at the idea of biology, yeah. you know, like we've adapted this biology based on where we live. That we're the third planet from the sun. We get X amount of sunlight and there's water and so on and so forth. There's nothing that says other life forms can't be, instead of carbon-based, be silicon-based. or yeah. be. Yeah. So I don't know if we'll even recognize... The, the odds are that we won't. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> That's the thing about yeah, life on another planet. It yeah. may not take the form that we exactly. sort of anticipate that has how been you, in the pop culture. How do you know that Earth is in a fucking melting pot where all kinds of species have already come from other planets? Look at flies, for example. What the fuck is that? They look like... <laughs> The, the multiple, I mean, they're, what if they're... I'm going to sign you up and reach for the top. <laughs> <laughs> Flies. What the fuck is that? Is there anything what, else? What if they're, no. what if the, every fly you, you swat is a fucking spaceship full of little people in it? Dude, I have and enough would to worry about. Know. No, but seriously, you know how you wouldn't recognize yeah. other life forms? What if we're doing that on a daily basis and we don't even know? You know what? You know what I'm saying? What's amazing to me is that we know scientifically that we are made literally from stars. So the elements that are formed in stars that are then ejected out of the stars and travel through millions and millions of miles of space yeah. and then land here so that the circumstances are fortuitous enough that the chemicals in the water are just right and that like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Oh, so yeah, yeah. to me, I don't understand how all of us are not like, why are we arguing over borders? Why would like I know I, that sounds so naive and maybe a little trite, right? No, it doesn't. But, it's just that nobody ever guess. Nobody wants to go there for some reason. A lot of people just, don't put it in that perspective. No, a lot of don't. people aren't aware that we are all related to that same bit of of, of dust yeah. that started the universe. Exactly. A lot of people don't even know that fact. That's that true, we're yeah. three That's related. We're related to dogs and cats, and we're related to amoeba and flies, and we're related to all the chunks. We're all the same Mars. stuff. I don't think the flies. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure the flies are from another fucking planet. You know who I think is from another planet? Platypus. <laughs> platypus. Seriously, yeah, does right. platypus not like if there is a god? And, and, and I am Catholic, but I will say, I have a an image of him putting this together from a bag of leftover stuff, <laughs> basically. <laughs> right? Because who goes? I've yeah. got the body, it's furry. You know what that needs? A duck bill. I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm, now, venomous barbs, because In this drawer. why? Yeah. Because why? Yeah. Who would look at a platypus and go, that'll be delicious? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Listen. Yes. Before we continue our, our, our chat, let's get to the last segment of our show, which is some meltdown stupid stupidness. 
I dug up some uh, some things. Ten dumb space conspiracy theories that people actually. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do this. People actually believe in. Okay. Uh, here's the first one. The Pope and the President of the USA meet aliens every year. <laughs> like meet them where? Well, meet them. But like meet a... them. Well, like, let me read it. <laughs> okay. Then you'll find out. All right. The Pope recently said that he like would... at a friendlies. Like they all hang out at a friendlies. <laughs> You know what I mean? Grand Slam breakfast, please, for my <laughs> alien friend. I know he's got seven eyes. Just bring him the pancakes. <laughs> Sorry. And, uh, and for my for my blobbish type friend, <laughs> just bring him a straw. I don't know what. Can, can you not to. see a oh, way just like what? Yeah. What does your blobby friend want? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, go on. I, I'm sorry. Wait, you're saying that's not true? <laughs> what I'm saying is I'm upset now that there's ten of these because <laughs> we might get two of them done. No, we'll go. We'll go. Uh, we'll okay. Go. So the Pope and the President of the USA meet aliens every year, not at a Denny's. <laughs> the Pope recently said that he would baptize Martian aliens if they came to him. <laughs> His point was that there is no one he would discriminate against when it comes to baptizing. Except gay people. The, <laughs> yeah. Jesus. The people went crazy. Oh my saying, God, this is driving me nuts. I'm sorry, Norm. I'm sorry. So he's okay with the Rigelians, not good with homosexuals. Oh my God. All right. All right. Number two. I'm not sorry. I'm going to bother. That one's dead. Oh my God, that makes me. There yeah. is an alien base on the dark side of the moon. Remember, these are conspiracy theories that people believe in, okay? Okay. Because we cannot see the dark side of the moon, and hence it is convenient. It's technically not true, but go ahead. It is convenient for them to monger this rumor. Many photoshopped images of the dark side have been circulating, claiming that the patterns are alien bases. Okay. Well, I will. I will say this. Okay. I I know that I learned the majority of what I know about the moon from the Pink Floyd record, mm -hmm. and I can tell you they don't mention that at all. Yeah. So there's yeah. money on it. Yeah. And time. Yeah. And time yeah. is money. <laughs> what a drag. I know. Right? Uh, I <laughs> let him say something. Well, he's going to right now uh, because uh, here's the third one. The moon landing didn't happen. Jeff? Well, of course, we've done an entire episode about that. Yeah. And, um, I can't believe that's still a thing, dude. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah. Honestly. So is Flat Earth Society. Yeah, right and right. Uh, we mentioned that Buzz Aldrin once punched a filmmaker in the face in a <laughs> film about, about the fact that the moon landing was a, just a conspiracy theory. Yeah. And, of course, we said don't ever mention to Buzz Aldrin that the moon landings did not happen because he'll punch you in the face. I, res I said that before on the show, and I'm saying it again just in case you people run into Buzz Aldrin. Remember, there are certain things you don't say around him. <laughs> here's, yeah. here's the thing. My, what, our audience, of course, <laughs> yeah, usually uh, run in those much, circles. They have a big That's likelihood right. of running into Buzz Aldrin. <laughs> See, here's the thing. I'd have, I have two things to say here. One, the f guy's first name is Buzz. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? Well, like light year too. Well, here's what I mean. It's all in presentation. <coughs> if the guy's name was something, you know, somebody named Buzz, there's a natural tendency to go, mm. yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 This guy can punch me in the face. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It says Edwin on the plot, though. That's true. I just, I find yeah, it very odd. Exactly. Did you guys know that one of the astronauts had left a picture of his wife and kids? Oh, yeah. There's a very famous yeah. photo. Yeah. It was her birthday, and she let, he left the photo of her on the moon. Right. Which I thought was really, and of course and it'll boy, be Boy, did he get in shit for oh, that. Oh, well, he forgot it. That's the thing. Fuck. Yeah. Also, toothbrush? Where is the picture of Junior and I? Where did you put that? You didn't leave that on the moon, did you? Just like you to do something like that. I know I left the moon with it. All right. Buzz. <laughs> that so All right. Weird. Here's, another, here's another crazy conspiracy theory, spatial Space, not spatial. No. Space conspiracy. Theory. Spatial conspiracy. People. <laughs> you know, boxes are not boxes. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> Some aliens have sneaked into the space shuttles and are on our planet now. Some people. One more time. Okay. the The theory is that some aliens have sneaked onto the space shuttles. And, sneaked onto. Yeah, and are on our planet. So now. the idea is that so. so now, here, so, let me read this. A NASA employee claimed that an alien hitched a ride on the space shuttle and actually talked to astronauts sitting in it. While conversations are a good thing, you cannot just have them during a critical reentry procedure. First of procedure. all. But the reason was not seen by the theorists and they took the employee's word as fact and is still shoved into our faces as evidence every now and then. <laughs> if I'm on the space shuttle, yep. 
And uh, I hear a knocking. <laughs> and I look out the window, and there's a space hippie yeah. <laughs> asking me to hitch a ride. <laughs> it's not an easy rider, buddy. No. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I find that amazing. Because the thing with conspiracy theories that I find fascinating is they never finish telling the story. Right? <laughs> so you have, you have the setup, yeah. but what's the end goal? Why would somebody do that? What do they oh, stand you know, to gain? Uh, That's the question. What do they stand to gain? You know, they're 15 minutes little. Sorry? They're 15 minutes. Everybody wants their 15 minutes of fame. You think that's what it is? Ah, it's what motivates most of us other than sex or money. And money. Or sex, sex and money. money. Sex money. <laughs> money, that's the, money. That's the best kind of money. Money for sex. That's what I like. Oh. I, I'd like to... That's not what I was... You know, because I could probably make a couple of bucks. <laughs> <laughs> just Here, a couple. Here's just a couple that I'm done. Here's <laughs> another... Very good, but it's super dollars. popular in Berlin. Here, here's another space conspiracy theory that people actually believe that a nuclear explosion wiped out the entire life of Mars. Okay. Explain. Well, it says here the that is assuming that like there were, was a society and they yeah, blew themselves that up. That is assuming okay. that there were humans and they actually ended up with the same technology we have and made the same mistakes we did. This doesn't sound like a conspiracy at all, just a very a dystopian fantasy. See, that's I mean that's hubris too, though. Just yeah. that we would. It's the same idea I behind had hubris. Why well, had peanut butter on it? And I didn't really <laughs> enjoy it's, it. It's very. Oh, well, you didn't like it? No. How did you prepare it? Why well, I, I fried it. <laughs> <laughs> I should have said boiled, right? We talked about uh, this. Boiled thought hubris thought was, is funny. Yeah, boiled because <laughs> fried that's is not delicious. funny. <laughs> boiled <laughs> hubris. Yeah, boiled hubris. What are you Irish? What the hell? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what is that, a potato? That's got way too much flavor. Yeah. Uh, is there a way we can drain the flavor yeah. out of it? Yeah, leave it in the yeah. water. Yeah. <laughs> I love my Irish friends. All right. I'm not going to read the, the... I love all my friends. Here's I'm just going to read the, the, the description because then we can talk about that. Okay. Another one is that Adam and Eve were aliens and they traveled on a spacecraft that was actually Noah's Ark. This is a theory that people believe. Huh. Well, Noah's Ark came afterwards, though. <laughs> yeah. I could have been recounted incorrectly. And it's also Noah's Ark, not Zygnus Ark. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Not Flactor from Planet 14. It's not that. Flactor? I don't know. That's a land. <laughs> now, what's Flactor? <laughs> New and improved. <laughs> With 10% more uh, Flactor. Here's a cool one. That the moon does not exist. It's just a hologram. <laughs> well, that, that I know is true. <laughs> so yeah. you know it is all again. Yeah, yeah. It's just basically shone up. Because every once in a while, if you're looking all the time, yeah. you can see it disappear. That's for a what second. I mean. You're yeah. right. You know what that is? I have it on my roof. That's where they decided to put it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's, it's a lot. It was supposed it's, to be. It's a lot of pressure. It was supposed to be one of those things that put stars on their homes. I'll be honest, guys. It's a lot of pressure. <laughs> yeah. Well, every night I gotta. Yeah. Right. And well, then if it's you know. winter, I gotta. But then I gotta hook it up for the other side of the planet. It's a whole thing. And fuck the extension cord. Alone. Oh, dude. Well, I'm Italian. We have a lot of extension cords. Yeah. We're very good at that. All right. And here's another one. Uh, <laughs> right. Another theory that people apparently believe is that the U.S. invaded Iraq because they were looking for stargates, and of course, stargates are portals into uh, other. Jeff. Well, so it wasn't just uh, weapons of mass destruction. It was. Uh... <laughs> that was the. That was what they told you. Uh -huh. Their true stargates? intent was looking for stargates. Yeah. Uh, I see. Oh, well, that explains everything. <laughs> yeah. In, here's the thing, right? Yeah. Yes. Um, even if that's true, let's assume. Sure. That it's true. Yeah. What does it matter? <laughs> well, because it? Uh, it uh, they felt that Iraq had the ability to uh, to go to other worlds and mm. get gain uh -huh. other technology from other and they would do all of this races. without being affected uh, by these other alien cultures. <laughs> I don't write the book on aliens. <laughs> I, I well, don't know what the agreements I, I have to are. I don't work. It's a... not just the one book on aliens. It's not like you go to chapters. Where's the aliens book? And they go, it's... <laughs> page one, Adam and Eve. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> just going to throw this one out here. All right. Uh, uh, another crazy theory. There are star children that are sent to the planet to... Help humanity. Uh, help them what? Start. Well, first of all, they're not doing us, a great job. Help Let's not kill ourselves. The Star oh, children. nice. It's a deep pull. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I had a deep pull. <laughs> if I, <laughs> I better now. Though. You get that in Montana's. <laughs> yeah. It comes with fries. <laughs> <laughs> deep pull. And my furry friend with the three arms will have a <laughs> orange whip. <laughs> orange whip. Yeah. Three orange whips. Um, <laughs> see, because John Candy from before. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes the references come minutes later. My point yeah. is what? I don't know, but it was an me. excellent point. Um, the Star Children thing. That, that, well, if that, the idea is that they're coming here to help us, yeah. first of all, are they helping us? 
Well, do we There's know? Nothing... Do we know that we wouldn't even be worse now? Maybe enough people are being helped that we're actually not worse off. Although maybe they're not helping, and we're worse off than we would have been. Mm. Or. Maybe we we'll just all make our own fucking so, decisions. So you, have, <laughs> so you have no opinion on I have zero opinion on Star Children. I, I will say I like the sound of that. Star oh, Children, you know? I saw Star Children open for the fifth dimension. <laughs> oh, yeah? In 71 yeah. in uh, Utica. Actually, I saw, the Utica. Fifth, I saw the fifth dimension in real life. No, really, I was about five years old. I saw them at the X. Who, who are your parents? <laughs> they wanted to see the fifth dimension. and Like Age of Aquarius we're talking about. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I was about five years old. It was at the X Grandstand. My brother would have been like two. Are you sure it wasn't the first edition? No, it was definitely... No, I'm it not was kidding. Definitely... Kenny Rogers. <laughs> are you sure it wasn't new edition? Kenny Rogers in the first edition was what oh. Kenny Rogers was in before yeah, he went solo. Right. I thought... And No, no, that is when Kenny Rogers' music was fucking good. Really good. I'm not sure what's uh, happening. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Kenny Rogers in the first edition. Yeah. Check it out. Space. Yeah, space. Oh, you know what? We haven't mentioned uh, Stephen Hawking yet. We, yeah. We cannot do a show about space without mentioning Stephen sure Hawking. Sure we can. It's Canada, yeah. I, <laughs> I love. I, I love the fact that, you know, you get to sort of experience him at you know, like the hospitals and stuff and the different buildings where when you leave... I'm confused and now you about what you're. Put your money in, and it says your parking fine is twenty dollars. <laughs> I think it's it helps keep his memory alive. I I can't even look at you. That was horrible. <laughs> but well, Stephen no. Hawking, Stephen Hawking, the sense of humor he ha he, he had. He oh, Stacy to my, since cosmology does not pay very well, I became the voice of various parking uh, meters, was, and I was happy to do it as another career. If Stephen Hawking had that kind of sense of wait humor. Wait a minute, you're, he would go along with that joke. He would love that kind yeah, of humor. He was, you're saying that he not only was a physicist but did makeup. <laughs> What? Cosmetology. Never mind. <laughs> oh my god. That's on me. Yeah. That's that's oh, weird. Because that would not be steady, I don't think, at all. <laughs> oh, the voice we can do, but that's gonna upset you really. I'm just, I'm just saying, Lou. There you know what levels. I always want him to do? <laughs> Open the pod doors, Hal. <laughs> Open the doors, Hal. Yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid I can't do that, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, space. Space. <laughs> we need another thing. No, I I think I think we've exhausted no. all our things. Can we talk more about oh, movies? You know what? Movies? No. Oh, okay. But here's something. Let's close out with talking about music because we all love music. Yeah. And there have been some great songs about space. Or oh, the, you know, and that's I can, interesting. I can think of one that is probably everyone's thinking of is David Bowie, right? Starman. Uh, Starman. What about uh, Ground Control to Major Tom? Space Odyssey. Space Odyssey. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. Just there have been some great songs about space and great songs about us exploring space. So you know what? When you were talking before about how there's Rocket Man. Oh, nice book. Yeah, there you go, Rocket Man. So I mean, just yeah, fire some out, fire some out. You what? know what? I'm actually I'm hard pressed to think of some aside from those three. Yeah, there's the obvious ones, and then it's yeah. Two Thousand Miles from Home, the Rolling Stones song. Okay. Uh, 20th Century Boy, which is kind of a space song, the T-Rex song. Okay. This isn't really a space song, but the, uh, the you know, um, oh, not, is it, was it Arlo Guthrie? You know, you can spend th uh, no, seven days in space when you come back, it's still the same goddamn place or whatever. Oh, that's a it, great uh, line, wow. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, who's saying Pete Se the, Was it Pete Seeger? Can we, let's pull him up. Let's see, yeah, the, let's... list the space song, just because I know where I'm totally well, blanking. Why don't you do that, Jeff? Because uh, I was going to say, while you're, while you're. Like who? Honey, or like uh, what? There was a band from Toronto called the Paca Orchestra. The Paca or Good Lord, Norm. Yeah, uh, I have their their CD. I love them. I actually got to see them at the Astrolab Theater for free. Oh, that's cool. And they were incredible. They're good. Like, man. Incredible. That record is amazing. Oh my God, it so is. And that came out around the same time as Boys Brigade too. No, I think so, but I'm not 100 okay. percent sure. But I know they had like Cherry Beach Express. Yeah. Um, you know that? what that song's about, eh? Yes, I do. Okay. Okay. It's about the cops at Cherry Beach Express. And I know uh, also there was the uh, that other song, some of the telephone, I can't remember what it's called now. Anyway, there was a song on the album called Might As Well Be On Mars, which was not necessarily about space, but the line was in a, in a relationship that he felt really distant. 
I might oh, as well wow, be on Mars. You know, I'm already that far away from you was the lyric. And I thought that was really kind of cool. That's a great lyric. Yeah. And Jeff, you haven't looked up anything. Uh, yeah, I don't know. How I don't. I, don't, I give you time. <laughs> I, I give you. Line. I give you time to look up shit by by taking us on a journey. Can I go back to? I don't know how we, to find them. <laughs> <laughs> what are you new? Yeah. It's uh, it's Google. Know. Google that shit. Okay, okay. You open up a web. You're not even. You don't know how to use a phone. No, I don't. Know. I accidentally <laughs> called someone. Hey, yeah. Hi, how you doing, Rick? <laughs> Is this space? <laughs> yeah, hello, space. How many phones okay, have been written let's about? Let's see if we can put this together out of all of the songs. <clears throat> all right. So we've got so Space man, Odyssey, we've got Starman. Space Oddity. Space Oddity. Sorry. Starman. Yeah. Uh, I, let's say mine as well be on Mars. That's fine. Okay. Um, I feel like there's a lot oh, more. Oh, there's a ton more. I'm sure there are. Rocketman. You know, Rocketman. But the thing is, we all, you know, you know, there are the ones that have made their mark, and those are the ones your brain just can't seem to get away from. But it's safe to say that space is a part of our culture. In every way. I, you know what? I right? think in from the way. very earliest days, yeah. you know, and, and you can get an indication of this by going, whenever you go camping, and you look up, mm. but when you're in a city, you see, if you see a dozen stars when you look up, you're, you're lucky. lucky. Yeah. If you go into the woods, so you got to keep in mind that thousands of years ago when there was no light from cities and whatever, just how crazy that must have been yeah. to look up and see the Milky Way and oh, be yeah. like, what the, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I think we've been doing that as long as there have been oh, people. Oh, for sure, for sure. Because yeah. it's that, that longing for connection, that longing for sense, that yeah. longing for like, this has got to mean something. Like, yeah. this can't be random, Yeah. you know? And it's like, I you know, whether it's random or not, I don't know. But I can tell you that I don't need to know to be able to enjoy the concepts. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think a lot of scientists these days, a lot of cosmologists, etc., a lot, from what I've read, theorize that that things don't happen randomly from a scientific point of view, that there is a reason for everything. That is the point of view. I know uh, I've read recently that, that you may not be able to explain it uh, at the moment, but that I know there are certain scientists that definitely say this does not all happen just by accident. There is a reason for each and everything. Um, so and I and I kind of go along with that. I, I think there is a reason why why ninety percent or more, I think, of the species on Earth became extinct. You know, um, there is a reason why it wasn't just a coincidence. I mean, you know, comets and stuff smash into planets and, and into moons all the time. Well, all the time. You know, relatively speaking. Uh, in fact, as Stephen Hawking said, we're actually overdue on this planet yeah. to be smashed by a comet or whatever. He um, was chock full of laughs that one. Eh? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> Mr. Doobie, we're all gonna die. Way to bring the party down, Stephen. Yeah, he did have it. He was. He did have his doom speak, so yeah. to speak. But well, on the other hand, he also had a great sense of humor. So, uh, uh, but yeah. So I, I believe that that everything happens for a reason, for sure. But and so do I. I believe that raisins are at the center of all things that happen. And everybody, we all do things for raisins. We got to back for up. Raisins? <laughs> yeah, we got to back up a little bit. Oh, raisin is like the uh, the sun that no one talks about in the grape family. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> raisin is the one that shows up at Christmas to ask for money. You know, he's just getting out of rehab. You know what I mean? <laughs> what if Have raisin... you seen the California raisins? Yeah, you think what that if, ended well what for if them? Raisins are aliens. Wow, that's huh. Great. Or their spaceships. That's unfortunate Space because I've, I've done some horrible things to reason. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure that we've exhausted everything that we have, all three of us. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and talking we're about sorry. space. And no, no, yeah, yeah, we apologize uh, because we know this episode ran long, but hey, it should because it's what it is. And I think it's safe to say that the space exploration and the idea that there is something else out there, that there has to be mm. something else out there, is prevalent in all of our minds. But you know what? While we're on this planet, can we just say, while we're all on this planet, sharing this planet, well, can we just try to be nice about it? Yeah. And, and fucking treat each other with respect and, and like, for fuck's sake, what, what, is, what are you laughing about? <laughs> I, tried to joke. Tie this, I tried to tie this together with a nice... It's because you were giving such a lovely message and then you felt the need to say fuck in front of it, which I thought was hilarious. That's why I laughed. It's an all-purpose word. I'm, but you're, really you're right, dude. Yeah. I mean, you know, like, I, 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 I think you're right. I think we, we need to... Uh, Especially at this time of year, you know, whether you're religious or not, the idea is still a good one in terms of like, you know, I know it's easy to get wrapped up in your own shit, mm. myself included, but, you know, when something happens or you're annoyed by somebody or whatever, just take a second. Take a breath and take a second. You know, like, if we are in fact the only life 
uh -huh. you know, in the universe, then it's that much more precious and True. that much more important. Yep. You know, and that's your special message from the three of us <laughs> at the Meltdown. One to learn on. Lou, it's been fun. Thank you for joining us one more time. This has been awesome. I'd like to thank you, Norm, and I'd like to thank you, Jeff, who who have let me come and and uh, and hang out and play and. Uh, I, I very much appreciate it. It's, it's always so much fun to do this Good. with you guys. Will you join us for another season, Lou? I, if you will have me, I will be here. All right. And then uh, we'll Also, have I know to, where you live. We'll have so. to figure out what to talk about next finale. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know we've looked at inventions. Yeah. We've now talked about space. What was the other one that we did? We talked about... You did the sex one? No, no. The oh, last tonight. time you were here... Oh, right. We so we've done oh, inventions. Right. We've done two invention shows. We've done space now. Warner yeah. Brothers cartoons. Uh, and the, and the, yeah, and that's right, that the was cartoons. Hard that was and we didn't mention uh, the space show. Marvin the Martian. Chuck Jones, who was good friends with Dude. Ray, Ray Bradbury, by the way. Seriously? Yes. Uh -huh. Ray Bradbury. That and Chuck, is bizarre. Ray Bradbury and Chuck Jones were definitely good friends, and of course, I'm sure Ray Bradbury influenced a lot of the Chuck Jones uh, cartoons. The, the the backgrounds, Maurice Noble. Wow, wow dude, uh, that Marvin is the Martian. so there's, cool. There's definitely a connection there, Ray Bradbury, with with Marvin the Martian and, and all of that. Because as I say, he was good friends with Chuck Jones. That is very cool. From all of us here at the Meltdown, all three of us, that is. Uh, we are wishing you all the best and thank you for joining us this whole season and we can't wait to see you again next season so until then ciao thank bye. you and ciao bye.